It's one of the first and only national historic landmarks in Missouri, but many who have grown up here don't know it exists. The home is named after one of the most well-known writers of his time and sits just blocks away from some of St. Louis's most iconic landmarks. Claire Kellett takes us to the historic attraction that's making St. Louis proud. You may have driven by it and had no idea. The Eugene Fieldhouse and Museum in downtown St. Louis, just a block from Bush Stadium. A lot of times we get people who say, I've walked by several times, but I've never been here and I thought I'd stop. And we are glad every time somebody does. Stephanie Bliss is the museum director, one of the few national historic landmarks in the region. We are just one of very few in Missouri and in St. Louis, and we're very proud of that. But who was Eugene Field? The house was saved because of Eugene Field, who was a famous writer and poet in the late 1800s. His poems mainly appealed to children like The Duel, Little Boy Blue, or the one you might still remember. Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod one night sailed off in a wooden shoe, sailed on a river of crystal light into a sea of dew. And at the end of the poem, you see that it's the little boy and he's winking and he's blinking and he's nodding off to sleep while his mother tells him a light story. Today, Eugene is remembered as a poet, but in his time, he was famous for his newspaper writing and is known as the father of the syndicated column. He was so popular in his lifetime that after his death, there was at least one school throughout the United States named after him. Like Eugene Field Elementary, that was once a school in the city of St. Louis, the museum has a special relationship with St. Louis school children who helped save it more than 80 years ago. In 1934, 1935, the school children here in St. Louis raised $2,000 to help save the house. That was a lot of money back then. And so we honor them still today by giving the St. Louis City School children free group admissions. So the house was saved because of Eugene. But we became a National Historic Landmark because of his father, Roswell Field. Roswell was the attorney for Dred Scott, a slave that had been taken into free states. His case, suing for his freedom, started right here at the old courthouse. But without Roswell, his case never would have made it to the highest court in the land. He changed it from a freedom suit to one about citizenship. And it was the first time that citizenship was argued in federal courts. And that's how it made it up to the US Supreme Court. The Scots lost, but because of the high profile case making it to the Supreme Court, one outspoken critic of the decision was thrust into the national political scene, a relatively unknown Illinois lawyer, Abraham Lincoln. This is the area where Roswell actually did a lot of his work. You can find period pieces of furniture on the first and second floor, but there's another aspect to this historic site. A very large toy collection because of Eugene's love of toys. In life, Eugene Field had a collection of more than 2,000 toys. To honor his memory, the building is also a museum of historic toys. And this toy is actually the oldest toy in our collection. It is from 1780, and it is called a snake in the box. Here's the concept. You tell a friend you can't get the box open and have them pull hard on the lid, then the snake pops out. Now, depending on what side of the joke you're on, you could either really like it or really not like it because when he comes out, there's actually a tack on the end of it in which um, pokes you. Ouch! So from learning about an historic trial to the poems of a famous writer or his collection of toys, the Eugene Fieldhouse could have something for everyone in the family. Hey, if you haven't been down here, give us a try. If you ever come down for a baseball game, come a little early and stop by and see us. In downtown St. Louis, Claire Kellett, News 4.